Welcome back our dear viewers. As we have promised at the beginning of the show that we are going to talk today about the cultural relations between Egypt and India and we are going to talk in particular about yoga. Uh, to what extent yoga is an important physical and uh, spiritual exercise. To shed a light on that issue, we are very much delighted to have His Excellency uh, uh, Ambassador Changi Bhattacharya. He is the Indian Ambassador to Cairo. Hello, Mr. Ambassador. How do you do? Okay. And before I begin, I would wish to uh, wish all your viewers uh, Ramadan Kareem, uh, Kul much. Ayam, Wa Entum Habir, <laughs> Ramadan Kareem. Hello, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Um, the United Nations uh, declared the 21st of June as uh, the International uh, Yoga Day with the approval of 175 countries. So uh, why was this day chosen to mark this uh, occasion? Well, you know, this is a very significant uh, moment yes. because uh, we have International Day to commemorate various different events or uh, uh, occasions. Um, yoga is something that binds all countries together. And uh, we have uh, uh, co-sponsored this along with Egypt and mm. several other yes. countries, and it was approved in the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, the significance of the moment arises because it is also the day which is uh, the equal, the longest day of the year. Mm. Uh, yes. And this is when uh, you have uh, the summer solstice, as yes. it is called. Beginning of uh, summer. Yoga has a strong connection with the sun. Uh, mm. In fact, uh, we start a yoga exercise with what's known as the Surya Namaskar or the prayer to the sun. Yes. And so most appropriately, it's done on the uh, summer solstice or the 21st of June. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ambassador, to what extent yoga is representing a real important physical and spiritual exercise that we should actually uh, all practice uh, uh, in a way or another? I'm delighted you mentioned both the physical and the spiritual part because very often we find that yoga is seen only as a physical exercise. Actually, as you said, it is much more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a belief that our body is actually a form of consciousness and there are different levels of consciousness. So what yoga tries to do is bring about a certain harmony within the body, the physical and the mental and the spiritual, mm -hmm. so that it can interact with outside, with other people, mm -hmm and the environment around us mm. in a similar harmonious manner. Mm. Uh, that's what the objective of yoga is. Mm. Also, India established a ministry for alternative health and medicine, mm. including yoga and homeopathy. So what are the main tasks of this ministry and how successful it is? What actually happens is that yoga is a way of life for yes. us. Mm. Uh, so there, is the, uh, there are different types uh, that constitute yoga mm. practice. Uh, the first part which is most common is the physical exercise or yes. what we call asana. But along with this, there is a very uh, well-defined structure for breathing, for meditation, and also for behavior. Mm. Uh, so all this combines together into uh, a life form or what is, we define as well-being. Mm. But un in invariably what we find is that uh, the well-being aspects uh, do not always follow the normal rules and we deviate. So we do need corrective action and therefore we have the science of medicine. Uh, in ancient India, we had what is known as the Ayurveda mm -hmm. or the Indian traditional medicine. And Ayurveda and yoga actually work very closely together. Uh, in India today, we have uh, universities that uh, teach Ayurveda and mm. the practice is very, very popular. And often this is combined with yogic practices so that yoga and Ayurveda or traditional medicine actually go hand in hand. Yes. Mm. Uh, so to shed more light because many people, maybe they are not very much aware of uh, what you have just mentioned about the Ayurveda system of uh, uh, medicine or for uh, treatments. So what's here the link between practicing yoga and meditation and the Ayurveda? Uh, if that uh, there is a flow of energy within the body. Mm. And this happens through the various nerves and other systems. Uh, and when there is an interruption, there is a certain problem that develops mm. or manifests itself. Uh, we also believe that uh, your physical activity and your spiritual self, how you cleanse yourself inside, um, will often be able to correct some of these imbalances. But sometimes you also need intervention 
from outside. And that is the medical intervention. Uh, it is uh, a balanced practice. Uh, so a lot of Ayurveda is actually based on the herbs that we see around mm. us, uh, based on the natural elements around in, mm. in the world. And so we find uh, the interaction of man with nature in the form of Ayurveda. I must also mention that in addition to Ayurveda, uh, there is a very widespread and prevalent practice of what is known as Yunani medicine, which is sometimes described as Greek, but actually it is Arabic medicine. As you know, we have a very, very old connection uh, with uh, Egypt and this part of the world. And the Arabic medicine is still widely practiced mm. in, in India as one of the traditional medicine forms. Mm. So, uh, do you associate uh, yoga with Hinduism? Well, uh, yoga did arise in the land of India. Yes. Uh, but today it is a heritage mm. which is shared yes. by all people across mm -hmm. the world. And I think a very clear instance of that uh, belief and confirmation of that is the fact that 177 nations uh, yes. co-sponsored the resolution of the National Day of Yoga. Uh, yoga is just a way of life. Uh, so it's not exactly a religion as such. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, how do you describe what you have just said, that yoga is a way of life? How can we uh, start to understand that and to what extent the person who is uh, adopting the, way, the yoga as a way of life is improving his life to a better condition? Uh, as I said, uh, there are uh, practices mm. which are physical or asanas, uh, and also there are practices that are spiritual. Indeed. Uh, and what we try and do is try and bring a sense of balance within the body. So when you wake up in the morning and do your asanas mm. or physical exercises for 20 minutes or half an hour, you tone your body for prepare it for the rest of the day. During the day, you practice breathing constantly. It's mm. a natural thing. But it is very, very important as to how you breathe mm. uh, because that is what provides enough energy mm. to all around to the different organs. So correct breathing is extremely important. And so it becomes something natural. But if you don't do it properly, mm. you will not be feeling good right through the day. Mm. Finally, I think what happens is that you also interact with people. And as I said, behavior is, a, is an essential part of yoga. Uh, the essence of yoga is, today in particular you see that there is a lot of conflict, of stress in our lives. Indeed. Uh, how do you de-stress yourself? I can assure you that if you do right breathing mm. for five minutes, yes. you will constantly be able to de-stress yourself, immediately. Uh, the importance of this is that when you occupy your mind with something that is negative, if you bring in positive energy inside you, you will be able to evoke that positiveness inside the wholeness of yourself. And we feel this is very important mm. because once you've achieved that inside, you can do it with the rest of the people and the nature around you. So can you shed light on the role of uh, the Indian Cultural Center in spreading uh, yoga practices in Egypt? We have uh, the Molana Azad Center, yes. uh, named after our first education minister, Molana Azad. He was also, incidentally, um, he'd studied in Egypt mm -hmm. at the Al Azhar University, and uh, he's regarded as uh, the fountainhead of the mm -hmm. education policy in India. Uh, so when we got our independence, he became the minister. Uh, at the center, we have uh, a variety of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we teach yoga. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough space for everybody. We would like to take more students. Mm. Uh, but we have a wonderful yoga instructor uh, from India who teaches yoga. We also teach Indian languages. Mm -hmm. uh, we teach Indian dance. Uh, and we also host a range of other activities. Uh, one of the activities that I'm particularly fond of is our weekly interaction with Egyptian school children. In collaboration with the Ministry of Education, uh, we have a group of about 30 to 50 
uh, Egyptian primary school children mm. who visit the, uh, the center. And at the cultural center, we have an entire morning to spend with them, during which you show them a few films on India, on the diversity that India represents. Uh, we speak a little bit of Hindi. Uh, we play some games, Indian sports. We do a little bit of yoga. And uh, we try and develop a certain link mm. and connect. And I'm particularly happy with this because uh, we really believe mm. that the children and the youth are the foundation mm. of any society. And the links that they develop when they are young is something that endures for a very long time as well. Of course, there are many other outreach programs that we do to connect with the other uh, activities. Mm. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, how the people who are interested in uh, doing uh, yoga or um, uh, uh, Indian dancing be able to uh, book a place or to come to the center for uh, practicing? Well, we are in the digital age, so mm. we, are, uh, uh, we have a Facebook page, India mm. in Egypt, and uh, anyone can find out what the activities of the culture center are and uh, log in and register for the classes. Uh, we also host uh, a number of events. Mm. Uh, we have film shows, we have workshops, we have seminars. And of course, we do this really big uh, festival, India by the Nile, every year, uh, for which people can register online mm. uh, and participate. Mm -hmm. Also, the Indian uh, uh, embassy is organizing a big event to celebrate uh, the Yuga Day on the 21st of June. Can you tell us more about this event and the competition you plan to do that day? Yes, uh, we are particularly pleased to be hosting the second mm. International Day of Yoga on the 21st of June. Uh, it will be held in the Al Azhar Park yes. uh, in Cairo. Um, it will start uh, a little before 8. Uh, it's a, actually a very happy coincidence that it is happening in the holy month of Ramadan, yes. when people feel very spiritual mm -hmm. in any case. And yoga is also a physical, spiritual Indeed. experience. And so it's a delightful combination of doing yoga during Ramadan because this celebrates the unity of the spiritual experience. So on the 21st of June, we have developed a common yoga protocol mm. which will be practiced across the globe, uh, starting from yes. Fiji very early in the morning mm. uh, in, the, in the Pacific Ocean. It will travel across uh, Asia and into Africa we will do it around 8 o'clock in Egypt and then it will continue across Europe and America. Oh, yeah, it starts 8 o'clock in the morning. In, in the Al evening. In the evening. So this is particularly mm. because of Ramadan. Mm. That because I believe your, that uh, last year it was in the morning. It was in the evening as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was at the India House, my residence mm. in Zamalek. Uh, but it was so crowded that we realized that um, my house was not big enough mm -hmm. <laughs> for uh, the very high level of enthusiasm mm. that Egypt has about yoga. In fact, I noticed that between last year and this year, the number of yoga schools in Cairo Indeed, has maybe. grown threefold. Oh. Uh, so what we're doing this time is that uh, we will do the common yoga protocol at 8 o'clock, but before and after, we will accommodate the various yoga schools in, in the city, and they will run their own yoga uh, mm. practices. As I said, Yoga has many, many different parts to it, mm. uh, exercise, meditation, pranayam. Mm. And so these different schools will do these different forms of yoga uh, before and after. Um, we were very pleased to host the first yoga championship. Uh, and this is unique because uh, unlike other championships in which you compete against others, in a yoga championship, you compete against yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and we had about 75 participants, uh, ranging from very little children, uh, aged between mm. five and six, uh, to people who were in their 60s. Yes. Uh, it was a delightful experience to mm. see how the practice of yoga has grown in Egypt, mm. both in terms of expertise and numbers. But, but how do you explain that? Because um, I did feel, actually, uh, Mr. Ambassador, that People, uh, most of the people now are really interested in that uh, uh, exercise in yoga in particular. And many schools have been created and established uh, for uh, yoga training. And to what extent you are aware and in relation with these uh, schools who are teaching yoga? As I was saying earlier, I think our lives have become 
more stressful. Yeah. And we need to de-stress. Uh, also, if you look at the society around us, there is growing conflict. So we need peace. Mm -hmm. And I think for both these, it is uh, very useful uh, to do yoga. We need to go back to our traditions. We have a very healthy tradition of being able to address some of these social and personal issues. And yoga helps these mm -hmm. in a very beautiful manner. And I think the wonderful people of Egypt realize that. And I maintain very close links with uh, most of the yoga schools. I visit them. Uh, and I'm very, very proud of the fact that the manner in which it has grown is truly marvelous. We also have yoga instructors who come in from India to teach the yoga in the original manner. We have many students from here and teachers who go across to India. And they learn it at the yoga schools back in mm. India as well. Uh, so there is a constant exchange of yoga practices between S India and Egypt. In your opinion, what tools do you think are essential for starting a yoga practice? I think dedication is the first aspect. Uh, I think uh, yoga starts with the cleansing of the body and the mind. So do you think that anyone can do yoga? Anyone can do yoga. I would say everyone should do mm. yoga. Mm. And you don't need to be an expert doing difficult exercises. Yes. The beauty of yoga is that you start at the level of physical and mental preparedness mm. that you have today. And every day through exercise, through yoga, you try and improve yourself so that you do better tomorrow mm -hmm. than you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, to what extent meditation is an important part of the yoga practices? Our mind gets cluttered with many thoughts, mm. many of them negative. What meditation does is it cleanses the mind. The other thing that meditation does is helps us focus. Because of the very complex life that we live, we often lose the ability to focus on a central task, to be able to identify that this is what needs to be done now. That is what meditation is about. And once you can do meditation properly, mm. you will be able to see the harmony mm. of the energy fields between yourself and those outside. It's a tremendously liberating experience. Mm -hmm. So it can be a way of life not just for a short period of time and then we practice yoga for two or three months and then leave yoga. No, it's recommended to be a way of life. It right? is actually a way of life, but yoga has no restrictions and it has no stipulations. Hmm. Everyone must choose and do the yoga in the manner they feel yes. best. Hmm. So it's okay to do yoga, physical yoga, for a short period of time. It would be good if you can continue. Hmm. But if you can't, that's also okay. Mm. Because in that short period of time, you will realize the benefits that come from yoga. Mm. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, what about the other cultural relations between Egypt and India that uh, we can benefit from? Because um, you have just mentioned the dancing uh, thing here in Egypt. And of course, I, I believe that Egyptians are very fond of the uh, Indian dancing. So do you provide classes here for the people who are interested or uh, what uh, activities here? Yes, uh, we have dance classes that are organized at the Culture Center. Uh, we are very privileged that we actually have a Russian lady hmm. who provides Indian classical Russian dance. Russian lady, not a Indian. A Russian lady <laughs> who was trained in India in Indian classical dance and she's an excellent, outstanding teacher. We shall soon be having an Indian dance teacher uh, yeah. come to the center as well, which will mean that we will be able to take care of, uh, provide uh, classical dance lessons to many more mm. uh, Egyptians. Uh, I would like to develop links mm. and collaborative efforts uh, in different fields of culture. Uh, that is the objective of the culture center. Indeed. Mm. So, uh, I want to ask you something. What does yoga mean in Indian language? Yoga means to unite. 
yes. uh, to unite your energy within mm, okay. and to unite that energy within mm. with the energy outside. Uh, it basically seeks to convert positive feelings mm -hmm. uh, so that you have a very favorable, a harmonious and peaceful approach towards life around. Um, most people in India uh, practice yoga. Uh, many of them uh, do it on a very, very regular basis. Some of them do it periodically. Uh, or they do a detox, for instance. So there are many forms in which yoga is practiced in India. Mm. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, mm. why uh, yoga is uh, mainly uh, an important uh, thing that uh, rised in India in particular? Well, it began in India, yeah. as I said. Historically, I mean. Yeah. Mm. Um, historically, uh, yoga was practiced for a very long time, but mm. the first texts that we have. Uh, it's all written down. Yeah, the course. first text that we have was, were those written by a person called Patanjali. Mm. So it's known as Patanjali Yoga. This was about 2,200 years ago uh, when these texts were written out. He described the eight forms of yoga mm. in which you try to receive or reach the uh, unity mm. between the six different levels of consciousness. Mm. There is a consciousness within, mm -hmm. and that unites with the consciousness outside you. But, but you have just six levels, not, not two or three uh, levels of consciousness. There are six levels of consciousness, mm. um, and these are different fields of energy mm. uh, within and outside the body, uh, from inside right to the absolute outside when you reach unity with the universe. Mm. And there are eight different forms that uh, Patanjali talked about. Mm. Of course, there are many other uh, yoga practices that have been written down by others as well. Uh, and schools and universities in India uh, actually teach uh, these forms of yoga. Mm -hmm. And for how long uh, Indians have been practicing yoga now? Have I? Uh, in India, for how long uh, people in India have been practicing? Oh, yoga? since the beginning of time. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> since the beginning of time. Okay. Mm. Uh, so, um, can we talk about the different field of cooperation between Egypt and India? Small hint about that. Yeah, I would say that the cultural cooperation between India and Egypt mm. is something that has uh, been a very strong foundation for the building of bilateral relations. Uh, I believe it forms uh, a very strong bond between our people because we are both people from ancient civilizations. Yes. So we both have a very strong and deep heritage uh, which forms us, gives us a great confidence uh, about our past and it provides indications about our future mm -hmm. because we do not live in the past but we always learn to work, to innovate and build a brighter future. Uh, for us over here in, in Egypt, uh, we have different forms. Mm -hmm. uh, I am seeking to uh, develop closer academic links, uh, links with the youth, uh, and to develop many more collaborative uh, activities. Uh, so on the one hand, we have the Culture Center, which uh, propagates uh, or spreads out mm. Indian culture in its many forms. And you teach English, uh, Indian language as well in this center? Yeah. That is correct. We teach uh, Hindi and Urdu yes. uh, at, the, uh, at the culture center. Uh, we have gone out to the universities and schools. Mm. Uh, at the universities, uh, we have recently established the first Indian chair in the Ayn Shams University. Mm. Uh, this will be for a professor on IT to come from India and teach at the uh, Ayn Shams, Shams University. Yes, actually Indians, IT engineers are uh, very shrewd and uh, clever. They have done a good yes. job. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to share that with our Egyptian friends. I think what it will also do is build a bridge mm -hmm. with the young people yes. of Egypt. And I am confident that the young people will find new ways in which they will enrich this relationship. Uh, we also uh, bring in um, different forms, like we talked of dance earlier. There's also music that we do, mm -hmm. so it's very, very different. To what extent uh, people are uh, <coughs> actually willing to um, uh, practice the, the dancing and music um, uh, uh, classes 
uh, the uh, cultural center and uh, you have kindly mentioned also that you are teaching the Urdu and uh, uh, Hindi uh, languages so to what extent people are actually aware of, uh, of these languages and are willing to uh, know more about it? Well our classes are absolutely full, full. That, uh, that's and if we had more time and space we could have uh, had many more mm. students. Dance has always been very popular, uh, particularly uh, Bollywood dance. Of course. And um, we have a few Bollywood groups that um, perform mm. in, in Egypt. Uh, we have found that there is uh, a commonality uh, between some of the traditional dance forms and Indian forms, uh, particularly in the folk tradition. Mm. You have a very large desert, um, and there are dances that come from that. And we have a small desert. Uh, last year, during our national day, we brought a Kalbelia troupe, which is from the desert state in oh. the western part of the mm. country. And we found that the tradition and practice mm. is very, very common. Uh, so there is a lot that we would wish to do in terms of collaborative activity. Mm. Uh, do you introduce some teaching uh, cooking classes may, uh, in the culture center because I, I believe also the Indian food is quite an interesting and uh, delicious uh, so that many Egyptians might be willing to know about more and to, uh, to be taught. Uh, yes, so. I do find that uh, Indian food, Indian cuisine is very popular. Mm. Uh, Indian cuisine is very varied. Uh, it, uh, of course, changes from uh, region to region. Uh, recently, we had uh, a food festival uh, last month uh, in, in Cairo. Mm. And the essence of this food festival was to show what the innovations mm. in Indian cuisine have been. Mm. And so just as you have uh, French cuisine, which mm. is prepared in a very, very delicate manner, we have Indian cuisine, uh, which has also evolved in that same form. And we have uh, beautiful uh, technology coming in with traditional uh, ingredients uh, to give a very interesting experience. We also combine our food with Indian wines and, and drinks mm. so that it is a very wholesome experience. Oh, yeah, indeed, I, um, uh, was that part of the India by the Nile or it was? That was a part of the India by the Nile mm. and it was hosted at the Four Seasons Hotel over here. Uh, so it yes. was actually a marvelous experience. Also, the fourth edition of uh, India by the Nile took place uh, last month, right? And took place in many uh, cities, not only in Cairo. That's true. So uh, this year, uh, the India by the Nile was bigger. Yes. Oh. Uh, in, we had 12 teams, uh, 40 performances over two weeks. Yes. And uh, we went out of Cairo. We went to Alexandria, yeah, Port Ismailia. Said, yes. Ismailia, and Beni Swef. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what were the activities that were held in these cities to make people uh, more aware about Indian culture? But of course, uh, the whole idea of uh, the cultural experience yes. is to update our friends in Egypt about the new developments that mm. have taken place in India. Yes. Uh, so for instance, in the food festival, we wanted to bring what the technology aspect mm. in uh, cuisine is, because that is very important. Mm. Uh, we brought the best Indian rock band uh, mm. playing music. Uh, and they performed at a university in Cairo for the first time. Mm. And I think the connect that uh, people make when a rock band mm. plays is truly unique. Uh, this rock band also went to Ismailia and they performed on the banks of uh, the Swiss Canal mm. because like the people of Egypt, uh, India believes that there is a great future lying ahead of us yes. uh, around the Swiss Canal. Uh, and investments, Indian yes. investments in that area are very, very large. In, what, in uh, which field are Indian interested in investments? Uh, in the Suez well, we have about 50 Indian companies yes. that are already present in, mm. in uh, Egypt with a total investment yes. of about $3 billion. Mm. And these are all in the non-hydrocarbon yes, sector. Okay. So India is one of the largest investors in the non-hydrocarbon sector in, in Egypt. Mm. Uh, but my businessmen are interested in doing even more. Uh, 
Uh, last year, we had three new Indian investments that came to Egypt. And this year, there are discussions uh, going on for many more to come into uh, this great country. Indeed. Uh, um, Your Excellency Ambassador uh, Chanji Bhattacharya, Indian Ambassador to Cairo, thank you very much uh, for being our guest for today and have a lovely morning. So thank you it's been a great pleasure. I invite you all to come and join us at the Al Azhar Park on the okay. 21st of June at 8 p.m. in the evening okay. after iftar. Okay. Uh, and we will all do yoga and celebrate the unity of the spiritual part of our existence. I'm sure it will be a very a unique experience. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. And now, uh, your viewers, uh, we'll go for a short break and we'll be back with the breakfast show, so stay tuned.